Construction Group Venge came out with its results today. The group reported a 37% drop in full-year headline earnings per share through to 306.4 cents. Earlier today, I caught up with the company's CEO, Roger Jardine, and asked him about the operating environment in both South Africa and Australia as they've experienced it. Firstly, uh, in South Africa, the uh, public sector infrastructure spend continues to be quite soft. And we see that in our order book growth, we 82% uh, of our business is private sector related. So, so our growth coming from the private sector, but also strong pressure on margins as more people compete for fewer mm -hmm. uh, contracts. In Australia, uh, very robust growth. In fact, our order book has gone up to uh, 37 billion rand, driven largely by Australia. But as we've mentioned, uh, we had two problematic contracts in that market. Uh, we've taken a very conservative approach to how we account for it. We believe we've dealt with it. But certainly going forward, uh, a very uh, stronger, a much stronger focus on execution, certainly. Well, uh, while it doesn't seem like it, I've been, uh, we've been seeing the commentary come through <coughs> that the South African construction firms have really avoided uh, the wrecking ball that crashed through other global players, and that on account of the fact that we had a major build-up to the 2010 Soccer World Cup. Just how much of a cushion has that afforded you in your books? Well, by the time the uh, Soccer World Cup happened last year, only about 7% of the work in our order book was World Cup related. So we've had to continue to focus on growing this business, but not just on growing, but on profitable growth, because when margins are under pressure, mm -hmm. the impulse is to take work for the sake of having work, and it's, but it's an art to find not just growth, but profitable growth. And that's where our focus has been. And to be able to do that in a very competitive environment, we've had to look very deeply at our own operations. What can we do better? Can we procure better? Are we structured correctly, et cetera? So audible growth with a very strong operational focus um, has certainly been the way we've uh, tried to manage uh, the current environment. So let's take a closer look at that order book of yours because it's grown 19% to 37 billion rand. Big questions being asked around the quality of that order book at this stage with margins in the spotlight as you've highlighted and whether you're forced to take on break even or loss making uh, contracts even. Just what kind of a position yeah. are you in? Look, I think there's a lot of pressure on margins as you've correctly pointed out. Um, we, uh, in these results, our um, construction engineering South African margin is 4.2%. We believe that we can hold on to a uh, operating margin in the 4 to 5% range in this environment. And that, of course, takes a lot of effort in terms of how we do our, how we execute our contracts. In Australia, uh, the margin we're reporting here is 2.2%, which is down on our uh, range of, four, of north of 4%. If you add back those contracts, obviously you'll have a different picture. But we still think that the sustainable long-term margin is in the 4 to 5% um, band. If you look at our manufacturing business, that margin uh, was affected by the settlement of our competition commission penalty at Avenge Manufacturing, uh, which has driven it down. Uh, the underlying margin there is about 5.86%. And even in this, mar in this market, we think for manufacturing and processing, it's in the 6 to 8 percent range. Well, what's been offering some support as well has been your net cash position. It's come down to 5.4 billion rand, but still remains strong, and it seems to be bringing some comfort at least to investors. Just how at risk does this position stand with working capital slowly being sucked up through the downtime? Look, we've seen um, uh, that obviously being uh, can be offset by the growth in our order book on the other hand. Mm -hmm. In our uh, cash at year end, we've uh, taken the view of uh, how much cash we need for cash back guarantees. Um, also, what the normal working capital uh, buffer should be for a business of this nature. And also our own requirements in terms of uh, PPPs and other ways in which we might want to leverage our strong balance sheet for growth going forward. Mm -hmm. Having taken all of that into account, we decided to, uh, you know, our practice is to pay a dividend of about four times uh, cover. We've been quite aggressive in terms of our dividend this time around, maintaining it at one rand forty-five cents mm -hmm. uh, per share. So we were able to return cash to our shareholders and maintain a robust balance sheet for growth. Let's take a look at some of the risks. First of all, in South Africa, I mean, you've had your involvement in the Gauteng Improvement Freeway project, and we've seen a delay on that tolling system come uh, into play. To what extent does that put now a delay in your payments, and how, you know, how quickly that reflects on your balance sheet? 
Look, we've been executing uh, this first phase of the uh, Gauteng Freeway Imp Improvement uh, Program. I think the risk is really looking forward. We uh, about 180 kilometers out of 560 kilometers of uh, road improvements so far have been executed. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's part of the uh, bundle of public sector infrastructure spend that has to come to market. And it's not just about average benefiting, but the whole construction industry waiting for this infrastructure rollout. Mm -hmm. And there undeniably is no better sector than infrastructure and construction to create the much needed jobs that everyone in South Africa is looking for. So I think there are a number of touch points around uh, uh, this uh, rollout. Of course, uh, looking at uh, the pipeline, I mean, it's one thing having a project pipeline. It's another thing having to deal with the steel price volatility and supply constraints. So how, how does that affect your capacity in terms of catering to the work that does come through and then pricing to maintain that quality of order book that we've been talking about? Look, our um, volumes are up at uh, having Stratton Steel 19% this past year. Mm -hmm. Um, driven um, mainly by the requirements of the automotive industry where we've just this past year invested in a 160 million rand blanking press which will put us in a position to provide a better product um, to the automotive industry. The uh, Newcastle mill outage obviously is on everyone's mind. Um, about 18 months ago we took a decision to gradually increase our imports as a, in, in our mix of uh, where we get our steel from. We currently import about 15% um, of our steel because mm -hmm. we wanted to secure relationships with uh, foreign um, mills. Um, we've seen an, uh, an announced increase in long steel at 5%. So we think over the course of this next year, you should see steel price increases of between 5 and 10% with imports trying to mitigate supply problems in the domestic market. Of course, uh, just very quickly, we can't ignore uh, you know, the penalties that regulators has, have imposed and you know, competition commission issues have been front and center for the longest while for uh, construction players. We had uh, your main rival, Marion Roberts, last week saying that it sunk to a full year loss uh, after making provisions for contract completion costs and then possible regulatory penalties as well. Provision line on your end with regard to those possible competition commission issues? Look, we, we've been alive to the competition commission issue for a while now. Um, we've paid fines where we have looked at the evidence and said that yes we are guilty and we've settled those. You know uh, our view is that the sooner the industry can deal with us the better. We are participating in the um, early settlement process, the leniency process, but we feel we're not in a position to quantify um, any possible penalties etc. It's a work in progress. And as soon as that becomes clear, we'll inform uh, the market of that. Well, certainly that something we'll be keeping uh, Roger Jardine, who is CEO of Avenge, joining us uh, earlier on today.